Hello and welcome to the first session of the course Technology for Continuous Production of Medicines. In Chapter 2 we are going to talk about continuous manufacturing basics. So what do you need to know to really understand the concept of continuous manufacturing? Before going into the technical details, let's take a brief look at continuous production and its history. So actually, continuous production is something that we have known as humans for a long time. History reports that in China, 800 BC, the first continuous production of iron was carried out in the continuous blast furnace. That's a very long time ago. Here you can see a picture of a 1637 blast furnace in China, which is already quite a while ago. The continuous manufacturing approach can be applied to multiple fields. For example, there was a technological breakthrough in 1771 in Comfort, Great Britain, where the first water-powered cotton mill was installed. Actually, this mill practically started the Industrial Revolution, because continuous manufacturing allowed to produce a lot of product in a very fast and very efficient way. As continuous production was implemented in other areas, other technologies emerge. For example, the first paper machine in 1799. Obviously, industrial paper production changed the way we produce paper and changed the way we communicate with each other. Continuous manufacturing can be applied to a large variety of fields. Therefore, also food manufacturing was changed by continuous manufacturing processes, making food available for many people. The first assembly line production for ship's biscuit was opened in 1833. Nowadays, almost all packaged food is produced continuously. This led to the production of food in a fast and efficient way. In the 19th century, the first oil refinery was opened, which also allowed us to once more produce fuel for a large number of people. Another interesting fact is that the first rotary tablet press was developed by stroke in the 19th century. Continuous manufacturing could have been implemented in the pharmaceutical field a lot earlier than it actually was. Moving forward, we know how Ford's assembly line production changed the way we look at cars. They were no longer a luxury product. They became a part of our everyday lives because they were available to a large number of people at an affordable price. This is something that you should keep in mind when thinking about continuous manufacturing and the benefits because we also want these benefits for the drugs and medicines that we produce. We want them to be available to everybody for a low price and we want to reduce production costs. And at the same time, we want them to be safe. Looking again at cars at first, they had no seat belts and not even decent roofs. Now we have side and front airbags and driving assistance that help us to stay safe. So while in other industries there was a lot of progress with regards to the method of production, in the pharmaceutical field it took until 2015 for the first product to be launched using continuous manufacturing technologies. There was a huge gap and you might ask yourself, well, what happened during that time? And you are right to ask that question. Because unfortunately, the reality is not very much. It was only around the year 2000 that first academic programs started to investigate continuous manufacturing. At Rutgers University by Museo and colleagues in the USA, followed by several universities such as Ghent, MIT, among others. The FDA, the US Food and Drug Administration, began to realize the huge benefits of continuous manufacturing for patients. So in 2011, Janet Woodcock, the acting commissioner of the FDA said, right now, manufacturing experts from the 1950s would easily recognize the pharmaceutical manufacturing processes of today. It is predicted that manufacturing will change in the next 25 years as current manufacturing practices are abandoned in favor of cleaner, flexible, more efficient, continuous manufacturing. The spirit of that time is also what encouraged people to spend time, effort and money to publish in this field. And what you see is that the number of publications exploded after that. It started out with slightly less than 200 publications in 2011 and by 2022 the level reached almost 900 per year, using only the keyword continuous manufacturing, not even mentioning related fields like PIT or process control. As I already mentioned, 
the potential of continuous manufacturing and process analytical technology was realized early by the FDA. In 2004, a framework for innovative pharmaceutical development, manufacturing and quality assurance was published by the FDA. It contains key elements relevant for continuous manufacturing, followed among others by relevant documents in 2012 about the quality by design approach and in 2019 by quality considerations for continuous manufacturing. The ICH, the International Council for Harmonization, which has 19 members all around the globe as of 2021, also works to implement continuous manufacturing. In 2021, the Q13 guideline on continuous manufacturing of drug substances and drug products was published. And therefore, even though nothing has happened for a very long time, the change is really accelerating. We will continue to quickly move towards this new flexible and efficient technology to allow us to produce medicines in a much better way. Drugs and medicines are there to help people and for that reason they need to be readily available, they need to be high quality and they need to be available at a reasonable price. So with that I'd like to thank you for your attention and I will be back soon with the next chapter on continuous manufacturing basics.